On this episode of The Timmerman Show, I have special guest Daniel Reese here from Idaho who has grown an impressive real estate portfolio in the RV park and mobile home park arena. This is definitely an interesting podcast if you're interested in those types of real estate investing. However, more importantly, it's his faith in Christ. He's turned down some amazing job opportunities in the past to choose his family and has been blessed tremendously because of it. You're not going to want to miss this episode on The Timberman Show. Building lives through stories of faith, business, and entrepreneurship in an ever-changing world. This is The Timberman Show. All right, man. What's up, Daniel? Daniel Reese in the house. Yes, sir. Boise, Idaho. Did you grow up in Idaho? No, no, no. First time I stepped foot in Idaho was back in 2009. For a B- job before the rest of the Californians came out. Exactly. You were the early I, one. I was the, everybody else is a, a, an early adopter. I guess you were an early or later adopter. Yeah, it was like two and a half years ago, 20. COVID replacement. Yeah. Got out of California. That's another podcast. <laughs> but um, where are you originally from? Originally from the Central Coast, okay. California. So San Luis Obispo area. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Cal State Slow. Yep. Awesome. Um, but man, you've had a lot of success in a short amount of time. I mean, how much... How much real estate do you own now and and how long? So purchased my first one, which was just a single family home about 10 years ago. That was the first real estate I ever owned. Um, And so now over the last two years, I've been able to get uh, three RV parks, three mobile home parks in two years. So it's been, it's been fun. It's been a great ride. What do you think the value is currently? Uh, Probably between all six of them, probably at about between four and 5 million. Wow. And, And how long of a time? And I think it's about 26 months. It's and no experience prior. No experience prior. Jeez. In the middle of it, I was like, "Dude, I'm gonna get my real estate license." Yeah. So I ended up getting my real estate license on a whim here in Idaho because okay. it's a low low entry point. So, right. That's so I crazy. can call myself a real estate professional. Now. Well, yeah, we'll definitely dive more into that. Um, and those of you guys listening and watching, um, we'll, we'll dive into more of Daniel's success in short, such a short amount of time. Uh, but I definitely want to get to know you, man, and just mm-hmm. let the people know kind of where you came from, your story, how your faith is intertwined in all this, just to bring you uh, this type of success. But I appreciate it, man. Just yeah, tell us, tell us just about Daniel. Where yeah, you, you know how you grew up, man. and and just more about you. Man, back in the back in the day, um, I grew up in a small farming community in um, in the Central Coast area. So. I grew up in a double wide, and what's ironic is now I own double wides. Um, <laughs> Full circle. Yeah. So I uh, grew up. We grew up kind of poor. Um, mm. Came from. What did your parents do? Uh, my father was an electrician, very successful electrician. But um, after six kids and twenty five years of marriage, they got a divorce. Mm. And so I was I was only six years old at the time. So I didn't really know what was going on. But my older siblings, the next one up for me was thirteen. And so the older ones in their teenage years really affected them, but me, I kind of didn't know any better. Right. Um, but then I kind of fell into sports. And what happened is my parents got a divorce. My dad left. Um, very successful electrician. Turned around and sold his company for a dollar. And then he left to Tennessee. He, he was just done. He was he was done. He was he burnt did. out. He uh, so that that was I really didn't know him growing up. So um, I got into sports and that's where i kind of got my father figures where my coaches they didn't even know it yeah so i started off with wrestling and hated wrestling but i was good at it um then my first love was football in fifth grade so i realized in between the lines like i was a nice goody two shoes for my teachers Mm -hmm. like i couldn't do anything wrong but in between the lines like it's like you ever see over the top where right. Sylvester Stallone turns right. it around, <laughs> turns into a machine. Like I, be, I became, you were just dialed in. I it was like a part of me became alive. Mm. So my coaches saw that, um, and it was, yeah, it's where I fell in love with hitting people. Slow white guy that what, could. What, what position were you? I was an outside linebacker. Oh wow. Yeah. So outside linebacker in high school, and then uh, blessed to get on. We won some championships. Um, so we were a small farming community that was in the southern section. So like the most northern school in the southern section. Okay. So for playoffs, we would have to go down to Los Angeles and play. Oh yeah, yeah. Play, play everybody down schools. there. Mm-hmm. Wow. So my junior year, we won championships. Senior year, we won a state, uh, not state championships, uh, a section or CIF championship. And then my, I got to play with my younger brother his senior year. So we had three years in a row where we won yeah. these uh, CIF southern section state champ or 
state championships. I feel like, and I played baseball competitively um, in high school and college, some scout teams, and um, I've got to play with some amazing guys who are in the pros right now. And I feel like a lot of great business-minded entrepreneurs had a, a, a sports background. Mm. They grew up playing competitive sports, not just your, your pony baseball or Pop Warner, but were actually competitive athletes. And I know, you know, a number of successful entrepreneurs that, that have that background. You know, so do you feel like there's some kind of correlation? I, with that? I think you're right on with that. I think there's something about, and also was a lot, a lot of it was before technology and before I, I didn't have any exposure to club sports. So mm-hmm. it was basically going out and playing dunk ball at the local right. like elementary school. And, right. and, um, yeah, so it was, a, it was kind of a, a different time, but I can see that, that competitive edge that you have. Mm-hmm. Part of it, too, is I think the intrinsic motivation that athletes have sometimes right. allow them to excel um, and also studying the game. I, I, when I played minor league football uh, after college, uh, the guys, I understood why I wasn't going to play in the NFL because mm. these guys were at the minor league level were substantially faster than Just me. Just a different breed. Yeah, but yeah. the only thing I had to my advantage and why I started over them is because I understood the game mm-hmm. and that that football IQ. Right. I when I was done competing, I changed that football IQ to okay. So how can I use that? kind of that strategy that I used to use for football, flip it and try to use it to make money in the business world exactly. or in real estate. Cause we're kind of in a game, man. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm realizing. Yeah. So I want to be on the right side of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you mentioned something about minor league football. So you played varsity in high school and then played in college. Yep. And then what you just got, like, how does a minor league system work for football? Oh, I know how it works oh, in baseball. Let but... me, let me tell you, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So you probably being in the minor league baseball, you probably know some of it. I got some pretty good stories, but um, ended up landing with a team called the Evansville Blue Cats. Okay. Which we played basically. So I got paid two two hundred bucks a week, and they put me up in a, a motel, gave me some food vouchers. Nice. We got paid two twenty five if we won. So Ooh. there's a twenty five dollar kicker if Bonus. we won the game. You can get so, sides with your meal at that point. Oh my goodness, <laughs> man! I got myself some Papa John's vouchers yep. for pepperoni pizza. Um. It was uh, a year after I played college ball. Uh, I was trying to. The reason why it made sense for me to to try to kind of go as far as I could is this team that um, my agent um, was uh, linking me up with had a guy that had played in Canada the year before, so there there was some exposure there. Right. Um, right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I got in there and really, I just got married. Um, and I left uh, within a month. I left like to go play across. I mean, we're, just after you got married. Oh yeah, we were living in Silicon Valley, and I talked to my w- wife, and I'm like, "Babe, guess what? I get to go play some minor league football." And she's like, "Where?" And I was like, "Evansville, Indiana." <laughs> she's uh, like, "No, that not from was, Silicon Valley." <laughs> that was the first time. Uh, within a week, I think there was the uh, tornado sirens. Never heard those before in my life. Right. Um, the weather is different. Right. I know why California is so expensive now. Yeah. It's, it's all about the weather, all about location. Yep. People being weak. <laughs> in um, fact, I still call myself fair weather. I mean, yeah. when it gets in the teens here, um, I, I don't wear flip flops anymore. No. But Boise isn't too bad. We no. get a couple bad months, but it isn't terrible. Um, that's crazy. So, so what was your experience like at that point in your life with your wife and, and playing minor league football and kind of where was your head at um, during those, those I th- days? I think when I, as I reflect back on it, um, what I realized that why I needed to pursue football um, is because everybody growing up was like, you could do it. Like nobody said, Dan, you should probably have a plan B. Right. So everybody's they like, were affirming your talents. They, exactly. Yeah. And nobody's like, uh, well, I, I mean, that's part of coming from a broken family and not having a dad speaking truth into your life. Right. Um, I wish I would have had somebody that's like, Dan, guess what? Coming out of a one double a school, you're a white guy. You love to hit people, but I think it'd probably be a good idea for you to think through kind of your other, the other things that the Lord's blessed you with. Right. So nobody was like, Dan playing football is a bad idea. Everybody's like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So you're Everybody, in your head, you're a hundred percent. in Exactly. Yeah. And, um, I remember, um, one of my coaches as he was lining up and 
making we had a couple guys getting looked at by the raiders and and running for the vikings and a few and we had a few linemen that are tackles they're not twin brother they were they're brothers but they weren't uh, a couple yeah. years apart six seven three twenty so it's like they got the exposure and the scouts there right. i'm like i'm gonna run too but you gotta shine yeah. exactly and yeah. so i remember my coach being like uh, my position coach being like dan i didn't even know you wanted to play in the nfl and i realized oh, I didn't tell them because I was kind of afraid that they were the true ones that could have spoken to my life. I'm like, I didn't want to hear from them who knew my talent level. Right. Right. As I look back, I'm like, I, I think I self-sabotaged, mm. um, which is a bummer, but, um, it's part of my story now. Yeah. That's awesome. And so, you know, during this time, well, like tell us how that ended and, and how you kind of shifted. I know you mentioned something about, um, you know, getting approached by USC, like where, where does that play into your story yeah. from football? So my exit interview with the head coach, um, and where I played, he was like, Dan, I think you'd be an amazing coach. Um, and he said, I, I'll, I'll make a call to Pete Carroll right now. If you are wanting a GA position, I see that you have kind of a future in coaching. Cause Pete was a head coach at USC, oh, he was at, the USC. at that time. They had just won yeah. a national championship. They right. wanted um, the school I came from was UC Davis and they've had a, a good amount of solid coaches come out. Right. Um, and he's like, I see you as being, um, just the way that I understood the game. And I saw, unfortunately my wife comes from a broken home as well. And I saw several coaches during my tenure at, uh, at the school in my junior or in my freshman year had jumped around to three, four different schools and then come back my senior year. And I'm like, Oh, I can't, mm. I can't do, I can't sub, I would be setting myself up. Right. So I right. declined that, even though I was like, well, that was Pete Carroll just won a national championship. I, I look back now, hindsight's 2020. What, what type but, of like status is that position? Uh, like, how, like how much is that paying at that point? Oh, you feel like? oh, a GA position. Oh, you put in your time. Like you're getting room and board, but maybe at SC, maybe like 18,000 a year. Like you're, you're a grunt. Yeah. But then again, he brought most of his staff up to the Seattle where he is now. Still. Right. So, so it it would have been a platform exactly. to to move up when he did. Yeah. Right? So, so looking back, it could have been super fruitful. SC was having a great, great several years. Um. So yeah. So it could have been, it could have been great. But my fear, um, and somebody else seeing that potential in me, I was like, I I, I can't. I like I knew better, right? I'm a right. I'm a I'm right. a 22 year old. Um, <laughs> But uh, just something inside me is like, I, I shouldn't shouldn't pursue that. Right. Was your wife happy about that? She was. Um, she was. She had seen um, the coaching carousel. So um, I look I look at where we're at now, and I'm like, oh. probably super, would have been a lot grateful. different if you would have taken that job, maybe it, in a bad way. Uh, exactly. Know? I mean, yeah. the the burnout rate um, of coaches, stress of travel, and being away from family, and that's that's the thing, and that's. Um, I was trying to protect, I didn't know it at the time, but really I was just trying to protect what we have now. Um, and so we, I mean, I'm super blessed on, yeah. on yeah. where we're at now with, with four kids and just celebrated 17 years of marriage. That's and awesome, man. Like that, that to me is the end goal yeah. from both of us coming from broken families. It's like four be, kids. Be the model of what a, a healthy God fearing family exactly. looks like. I mean, and, and it's like, we're not even close to being perfect, but it's like, that right there is, it's starting to, we're starting to see the fruits of our labor with mm -hmm. our oldest, yeah. um, which is pretty fun too. That's awesome. Yeah. How many kids do you have? Four kids, three girls and a boy. That's awesome. Finished off with a little boon. And you're done now. Well, so you it think. Would, it would be an act of God. <laughs> so explain just how you, how did you find real estate? And after you turned down that job, I mean, where, where did you shift from your mindset of I'm a football player to you know, now I'm going to pursue real estate. And I know there's oh, a chunk of life in between there, but, um, it, yeah. it was, uh, what was wild is, uh, I injured my neck, my th second or third game playing indoor football oh. and I uh, got my first MRI ever, but it was a, a workman's comp related issue that because I was, I was employed. Right. Right. Um, but I injured my neck and it was like, the Lord's like, okay, you're, you're actually done. Like you're done pursuing football. And that was nothing, your sign. That was, that was it. Yeah. And it was like, you can go on, you can, I needed that. Cause if he wouldn't, I would have still had that, uh, I'm going to do it eventually when I'm healed. 
he needed to do it something like that in my neck the way i the way i hit no wonder they talk about those uh new tackling strategies is right. because i was that's i would use my my neck in almost every um uh every hit so he needed i needed to sign that that big mm-hmm. um and then from there i went back and kind of hung my head i'm like lord okay like all i've ever known for t- the last you know i was 20 probably 25 24 25 started in fifth grade so the last 15 years is football every right. single season right so i hung it up and didn't know what i needed to do because i my degree was in communication mm-hmm. so i was actually a personal trainer and one of my clients is like dan you should get into financial advising granted he made all of his most of his money in real estate but he's like you would do well in financial advising so didn't know what that looked like because came from so much money, right? Living in a double wide, we right. always, always store the money underneath the home, <laughs> like underneath the foundation. Right. But, yeah. So that's ended, a joke, by the way. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, so we ended up door knocking for Edward Jones to get my license, security oh, license wow. in Silicon Valley. Um, and that's kind of, that's what got me to understand how money worked. Um, and then Fast forward, they don't really teach you much about real estate and in, in any, financial in advising. financial advising. Yeah. They, you got. I had my series seven, series sixty six, which is mutual fund license as well as my nine ten, my manager license. Anytime you're in any private placement or any kind of working with accredited investors, all financial advisors are required to disclose their outside assets, meaning any private placements, any. Anything that is not regulated right. substantially by the SEC, like you got to um, uh, disclose all that, and it has to be documented. They were not. Uh, they were not a fan of that. If and I would have known, company was or your, uh, no, my your, my company. I, uh, there yeah. were there were not many, uh, and this was your traditional kind of uh, financial advising, financial mm-hmm. services company. Uh, so it wasn't a boutique uh, right. family office, but right. um, they were not. They didn't want to let me know how real estate worked and how leverage worked. Um, well, they might lose an employee. They, they would lose an employee. <laughs> and, and, uh, do you, do you find that most financial advisors really don't have money and they're just managing people's money? <sighs> to be brutally honest, um, it's the majority that don't. And yeah. the, when you look at what a fiduciary is, there ain't many financial consultants out there who fall or align with the fiduciary role. Right. Um, yeah, they're CFPs and a lot of them are well-intentioned, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I totally believe it. Yeah. And, and, it, and that's just the way that business works. Right. And, and, and you see the same thing in our school systems. They're not teaching us about real estate in the public schools or about taxes, how to invest. Yeah. And you kind of wonder why, mm-hmm. you know, so how long did you stay at that job before? Oh, I was I was knocking on it. doors for like nine months, um, and you'll you'll find this too in financial services. Like I needed to to like it was Edward Jones was not a good amazing company, but their business model not a good fit for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I landed with a, another local company in for, to the Silicon Valley, uh, which actually was the same company I I got when I transferred up here to Boise. Okay. So and that was a another great company, um, but there seemed to be I I needed something more. Um, I kind of hit a wall at about the three or four year mark where mm. had it kind of dialed in, I understood the game and the strategy and I'm like, there's gotta be more than sitting in this cubicle right. typing client notes and making my 12 contacts. Right. Like yeah. there's gotta that, be that more. That gets old. It, it, it really, um, it was draining on my soul. Mm. So, and it, I, um, looking back, it was probably, I didn't have a lot of mentors at the time that that could have spoke truth into my, my life being like, Dan, you should probably, before you dive into something else, right. let's kind of have a strategy Plan on what that would look bit. like. Um, yeah. And uh, it was a little unconventional, but I, I hopped into day trading because uh, I had seen how you could do it well. Um, and so that was turned into a pretty tumultuous time in my life, <laughs> my lowest point. Oh. Um, but I thought I could do it. I needed that difference, and this is where the Lord's hand yeah. Um, was over me. And I remember my lowest point uh, in my life was curled up in a ball um, in my home 
and my wife like being like it's gonna be okay like she was my rock right when i'm the provider right and, um, and that for a man i mean that's a that's got to be the most humbling position to be in when you can't provide for your family kicking the nuts man yeah. like it was like for real like this is bam i'm like looking back i'm like the, it needed one of those things that i needed the end of football i needed that to happen and i didn't know why at the time why i needed to get so low but it just uh something switched and i was like okay i've seen what it can do i've seen what the lord can do after you hit those low points right it's like from there i it it's no wonder that some of the millionaire or multimillionaires or billionaires when they get the right mindset and they could lose everything mm -hmm. by one or two bad deals mm -hmm. but they're going to get it back right because they got they understand how it works and how the game's played right and that was the start of my journey and was, that's when you started diving in what got you um hooked on the mobile homes because i feel like that's not the most attractive avenue you see all these real estate gurus on youtube now and they're teaching fix and flips and wholesales but you're attacking this at a with the view of mobile homes and mobile mm -hmm. home parks in particular, right? Mm -hmm. So how how did you learn about that and decide this is the avenue I'm going? Man, the, the asset classes I feel like a, a bit misunderstood. It's not as mainstream. And uh, one of my mentors who started 22, 23 years ago bought his first park, and it was uh, seller financed. And mm -hmm. so. Once I understood that that can happen, because everybody's going to kind of talk through the bank financing sure. and all that, um, sure. when you open up the door where opportunities and it's more common to, to hop into some seller financing on the mobile homes, because that's how they traded for decades upon decades. Mm -hmm. um, that was just so much more common. And now it's not as not as common, but um, the valuation of them, it's a little misunderstood as well because it's not mainstream and what you can get dollar for dollar compared to a single family or other right. multi-class. It's like, I don't come from deep pockets, but the fact that I can get um, my first, got my first park through my self-directed IRA, um, and it was 20, 20 sites for under 200 grand in Kansas. Wow. wow. And, and with these sites, you don't own the actual homes or do you? Uh, we own some of the homes, uh, but the goal is not to own the goal the is to own the land. Just to and, and just to rent the dirt, man. Yeah, yeah. That's so. where the 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 mindset mentality is mm -hmm. on buying these, right? Because I think we talked when we had lunch the other day that the more homes you actually own, the more maintenance and overhead you have. Yep. So it's beneficial to have the owners own their own home, and you mm -hmm. just lease out the dirt. It's a win-win because most of the people in these communities are there are there for a reason they're lower income like they're basically the backbone kind of the backbone of do you think that scares investors because oh. you're dealing with people that are you know at lower income levels mm -hmm. it's got a so recently it's gotten a lot of attention this asset class has but uh, a lot of people thought it was sexy and then you jump in and you actually you you would if you if i could bottle up some of the smells that i've had from yeah, these and I'm could sure. sell them i could probably hurt a couple people yeah uh, they, I'm sure the nostrils would sure be the local police department <laughs> may have been there a few times or it so it, it is it used used to be sexy but when you get in and operate you're dealing with um kind of uh, just a I, I call it trying to help people adult just by making payments on time and doing mm -hmm. things that kind of our parents taught sure. us it's like yeah that's that's a normal uh week-to-week -week occurrence yeah. in, in these parks but uh, it's still a true, serving a true need because um, there's no, we don't have any Section 8. Right. But it's just, just true affordable, affordable housing. And do you feel like this is the path you're going to keep trajecting on is keep, keep buying mobile home parks? I, when the opportunity is there, um, can't pass up a, a deal. I mean, I've gotten uh, uh, one or two unicorns. Um, so I will continue to pursue those, but I... I hopped in an RV. I bought my first RV a couple nice. of years ago yeah. and took my family on a pretty special um, excursion and I fell in love with RV parks. So it's been uh, picked up over the course of the last year and a half, picked up three of those. Three RV parks. Yeah, RV parks. And so that's, that's straight land. That's straight. To jet, that's you have just a, like full hookups for each site? Yeah, full hookups. I'm, I'm flying to Kansas. I'm going to get some Wi-Fi going, some high stream internet. Um, I'm excited about that. RV camping is, especially here in Idaho and Wyoming, over by Grand Tetons, Jackson mm -hmm. Hole. I mean, it's, it's not cheap. Mm. It's not cheap. It's, 
there. last time I have a an RV, a little uh, it's like twenty three foot camper trailer that we pull. Um, and I think we spent like one hundred and twenty seven bucks a night for a decent place. And I know that seems high, but this was uh this was in Montana on the mm-hmm. Gallatin River. But I mean, I, I was doing the math on how many sites they had. And I'm like, if they're getting 120 and we didn't have the most expensive site, mm-hmm. multiply that by how many sites they have. I mean, they're, they're bringing in some change. They're doing pretty well. Yeah. They're doing pretty well. And some of these, uh, and your overhead is just utility. Overhead is utilities. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's several different par- type of parks you can buy. Um, some of them are more just transient focus where they're too, uh, two weeks or less the mostly weekenders and all that and that's right. it's kind of like the the restaurant services the the more you turn the dirt mm. in the rv the 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 more frequent or the, the higher income you can have right but there is that seasonality right so i tend to look for hybrid parks where you can get some that transient during the season and then fill it up during the off season with right. full timers because that's a pretty common trend nowadays uh, but that has to do with location and weather exactly. because in montana no one's going to be in their rv four feet of snow and below zero. Exactly. So, so you're looking mainly in what Midwest, South, Mid- Midwest, uh, Southern States. Uh, the, the park here in Idaho is still can be a year round park too. Oh, so it's, yeah, okay. the Northern Idaho, probably not so much, but, um, yeah, down here in Southern Idaho, it it, it works well. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so smart. Just, I, I again, I thought you were just mobile home parks, but man, the RV parks is even more of, uh, a live a liability eliminator mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. it's all risk management that's one thing i did get from financial services it comes down to the risk management mm. yeah. that's awesome getting me excited i want to go <laughs> buy some parks now um so this whole time i mean did you we talked about god and, and your faith a little bit but i don't know much about and i'd love for you to share to those listening just about you know how you found god and kind of your transformation moment mm-hmm. with your faith and then how that's kind of intertwined with with all of this Mm -hmm. just with your journey and and your trajectory yeah i appreciate that i appreciate all those podcasts out there that are that have faith intertwined because you look at you look at the higher up some people go and i'm in a a solid bible study that's testament to that is um the the world may try to like have the gurus come up with their own plans but it's it's all right biblically based so um my I, i grew up actually and grew up in the church um, and my mom was a, uh, a prayer warrior. And I believe that's probably what it was that allowed me to, um, through college, I found something called athletes in action, mm. which helped me out. Cause it gave me, as soon as I move in my freshman year, it's like, yeah. I'm super sheltered, but it gave me a, an instant set of friends that were older, wiser, um, that kept me kind of on the straight and narrow. Yeah. And that's where I met my wife to a couple of years, a uh, couple years down the road. So that, that was pivotal. Uh, did I, I grew my faith during that time, but which is athletes in action, just like FCA. It's very the, similar to FCA. Yeah. It's bore. It's basically the FCA, f- which is standalone. Um, it's campus crusade for Christ's uh, athletics focused. Okay. So that's, it's a kind of a subsidiary of that. Yeah. So awesome. it was all student, student led. I, I never took a leadership role in college, but um, went to several of the, uh, of the conferences and, um, really that, I think that along with that group of friends okay. allowed me to stay, stay solid in my mom's prayers during that time. And, yeah. um, but, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I talk about the lowest point in my life. The Lord, the Lord was there the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm, when I'm curled up, but he needed, I'm, and, and I think he might be like this too, cause most entrepreneurs are, mm-hmm. Um, having to experience something yourself, like mm-hmm. having to go down there. Some the the wiser ones are the ones that can learn from others, right? But sometimes that that stubbornness, I got to experience it myself. And yeah, that, that was me doing that. But his hand was through it all. Um, he opened up the door before I got into real estate. Uh, opened up the door for me to uh, become a head football coach, which. The whole reason and the backbone for me wanting to day trade is the market closes at two o'clock. Then you can go coach. I can go coach. Yeah. Like it, so it was honorable. Um, I mean, the the intentions were, um, I guess, honorable, but it was uh, it was unconventional how I got there. But uh, he opened up the door for me to uh, yeah hop in and start coaching during the day trading days. Um, when I failed miserably doing that, he opened up the door for <laughs> me to continue to coach. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so it was... 
So so all your uh, student athletes got the the pissed off Daniel after he lost money during oh, during yeah. the day. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, man! I remember taking laps around the park just to to run some steam off. Just after to calm down. One or two trades going yep. bad, man. I'll uh, that could be another yeah, episode too. <laughs> the volatility and what it takes yeah. to do something like that. Cause I, I was not cut out. Yeah. And part of it too, is it was just so isolated. The right. Lord in the Lord ingrained within me is I just need a, I need to bump shoulders with people. And so that's why mm. football was a great fit. And then growing up in team sports, but right. as soon as I got into the day trading aspect, it was like, this is not what you're designed to do at all. Right. Like this is so counter to the gifting I've given you. Yep. So he threw that, like I needed to experience it. Um, so, but my wife being basically by my side and helping me through that time, kind of being that rock, um, was amazing because that through that time, she encouraged me, um, our, our best are still to this day, our best investment is our, the first home that we ever bought. Right. First piece of real estate. Um, and so the Lord blessed us with being good stewards of that, used all that equity in there to go ahead and purchase our next home, which I mean, Boise has mm-hmm. grown tremendously thanks to everybody. Yeah, relocating. You're, you're welcome. Um, so uh, just being good stewards of that uh, along the way, he's just kind of guided us, uh, guided me on, okay, what's the best avenue to, to go right. with this? And so I've, I've remained solid in the kind of in church and taking more active roles. Yeah. Uh, during it, the it's last funny you years. mentioned the, uh, you know, getting to the lowest point because that's, that's how I got started and, and even construction and, and being timber man and, and even sitting here right now. Um, cause I played baseball my whole life. So mm-hmm. I'm you, but in baseball and not in, uh, not in football. And when I got injured and that was stripped from me, I mean, I was, I was 20 in my early twenties and just dirt poor, you know, mm-hmm. love my parents, but they didn't have anything to, to offer me with, with help, you know? So, um, at 25, that's when I started, going dumpster diving for pallets. I'd get free pallets. I, I was living in someone's apartment for free on the couch. Nice. And uh, I would convert those pallets into, you know, little coffee tables and stuff, mm-hmm. start selling them. But but that was my rock bottom, right? I, I'm, I have nothing, literally n- nothing to my name. Just counting, counting change to eat that day. Dumpster diving for pallets. But that's when the trajectory of, of sitting here right now, you know, years later started, mm-hmm. was at that low moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't think that's, that's anything that, uh, is out of the ordinary. I think God uses that, um, you know, and takes the lowly of the world to, to do great things. Um, and I think we have to be stripped of our pride and, and stripped of the things we thought that we knew. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and even when you mentioned the day trading, like you, you did that because you, you saw potential profit mm-hmm. instead of maybe at that time, just seeking what God would want. And, and he clearly showed you that wasn't that wasn't for you. Mm -hmm. And that's not your calling. That's not your gift. Um, but yeah, man, I I think that that faith and, and being grounded in that, you know, with your family and in your business is, is, is the stronghold that keeps everything together, you know? And how do you feel just with your wife, your kids? I mean, how how do you feel about just all pursuing him together and the effect that has that, that right there is, um, I said 17 years of marriage and the four kids, like, that to me, my wife and I were both come from broken, broken homes, both divorced. Um, we drew a line in the sand and we're like, we're stepping over. And so the intentionality behind that, um, the intentionality behind, uh, raising our kids and, and speaking truth into their lives is at the forefront every mm. single day. And mm. it's a sacrifice because yeah. it's so easy technology nowadays to let the kids babysit themselves. Right. But to be able to have that conversation, our, our biggest, my wife's biggest fear is the basically the day that our kids don't want to have that open conversation. So we mm-hmm. intentionally raise them young um, because the world's going to have them when they're out of the house and oh, they're yeah. going to, it's going to be like that when they're, right. they're, they're, they're going to grow up so fast. They're right. going to see things they can't unsee. So right. the intentionality that we have um, does take a lot of effort, but it's what we're seeing is it's so worth it. Yeah. So, Definitely. Yeah. And are you homeschooling them? We we aren't, but we are. Um, we're we have them in a, a yeah we have them in a, a solid uh, a private school. Okay. Yeah. So it's the Lord's blessed us and be able to do that. So to That's be able to awesome. have be able to That's have awesome. the same type of childhood that kind of I that me and my wife had. Unfortunately, nowadays you got to pay a premium for it. Totally. Yeah. Got got at the center of everything. I mean, in, in your family, in your business. 
it will just change your your mindset Mm -hmm. right with even people you work with man so i had a manager come and take a visit from kansas and he's picking up a dump trailer for me kind of my bucket i've always wanted to own a dump trailer so (laughs) Uh, on his way home, he was about to take off, and um, it was still snowing at that time. And I was like, the Lord's just was like, Dan, you should pray over him. So I had a great prayer over him, and it was the first time I had done that, and I'd known mm. him for the last couple of years. Yeah, um, Just something special um, between me and him. And so it, it shows that your business and this all this can be founded on him. Right. And, um, yeah, that, that was a special, special time. And I shared that with my... My wife and my kids, it was, they thought that was awesome. Yeah. And I think in, in some way people can shy away from doing that after you've known someone for so long and you've never prayed with them. And then out of nowhere, you know, to some, some people might think that's weird. And I, I've even had friends that have seen the, the other side of Nate that maybe isn't so godly growing mm-hmm. up. Right. And, mm-hmm. and I think it's, it's easy to, to shy away from those people mm-hmm. because, Hey, if I just hang out with this group that doesn't know my past, I can be godly Nate. I could be godly Daniel that just prays and this is awesome guy versus the people that you grew up with. You know, I, I think that's even more impactful when they see the mm-hmm. change you're going through and, 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 you know, just like praying with your manager that you hadn't for two years, mm-hmm. you know, that, and then that moment being such a special transformative moment, probably in yeah. his life too. I, I think so. I think there's, I think it's just going to open up the door for more conversations and breaking. I mean, what I love to do is break bread yeah. and uh, enjoy a meal with them. So yeah. they get to see that and that's just going to open up the door for more conversations. Yeah. And, 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 and now you've been inspired to, to do a course and, and pour into some guys' lives. So just talk about, mm-hmm. talk about that. Yeah. So I've realized from what I've, what I've done over such a short amount of time, it, it really comes down to, understand there's just not a solid knowledge base like i, I didn't have that as a financial on, advisor on the investing of mobile on, home parks and rv on the, parks exactly on the, just on the commercial real estate side in general uh, just how that how that works how traditional financing works versus seller financing right. so there was a big void and so i realized i should probably tell this story a little bit more often yeah and help others i am in several forums you know, I see people often asking, I'm like, hey, how, how do I even value my park? Mm. Or what's the first part of, like, what do I need to know during due diligence? Yeah. And and I start an- answering these questions, I realize I could probably save a lot of time by just sharing that and mm. sharing the knowledge that I've kind of drank through the fire hose over right. the last two and a half right. years. Um, and part of it is who I am, is I need to, I need to take it in and digest it. And then... I'll be able to comprehend sure. it and teach it. So sure. I not only do I just like, oh, just pick it up as I go, I really have to sit with it. So I get a lot of sleepless nights as I'm thinking through, how the heck am I going to make this Wi-Fi stronger at my RV yeah, park? Right. And then I, uh, it, it helps me in the long long haul because I, then I can troubleshoot what, when something goes wrong. But that's the entrepreneurial side of you that mm-hmm. now wants to take your success. I mean, four to five million in, in real estate in, in a couple of years with no experience is very impressive. Mm-hmm. And it... For those listening, I mean, just it, it's a true testament that real estate works when you work it mm-hmm. and you don't need any special training. You just need the hustle mm-hmm. and, and, and the right knowledge. Right. And that's something that you want to pass on, because a lot of people could be in real estate if they had the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Right. There's nothing, nothing too special about um, our backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Right. But we can invest. And, and that's what's so cool about real estate. So I think that's awesome. You know, doing that course and getting other people involved. Yeah. And then you mentioned something about. Um, just pouring into some some guys' lives as well. I, I realize I've uh, coming from a broken family. Um, my wife and I we spent some money on counseling. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but what I realized going through a few sessions is my heart goes out to like where I was ten to fifteen years ago, like helping catch that guy as he's at the bottom and helping him come up potentially. Mm. Mm. So it's. There's opportunities at, at my church to start diving into helping guys. And I mean, I would have loved to have somebody 15 years ahead of me yeah. when I was starting off raising, raising a family, mm. like, but somebody, somebody that I actually wanted to change places with. Right. 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 Like, uh, so, um, I'll actually forward. to hit on that because I, I, I think mentorship, um, in everyone's life, but you know, we're men. So let's talk about just mm-hmm. in a man's life, uh, is extremely crucial, mm-hmm. crucial. 
and can be a pivotal point in a, in a young man's life growing up. Do you feel like there's a separation between when guys want to seek a mentor, but it's not someone they want to be. It's just an elder guy in the church versus looking at YouTube. And there's all these guys that are super successful and that's where they want to be, but they're not faith-based. Right. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like that's something that needs to be kind of cured for guys growing up is, Hey, we should find guys that are successful and godly. And those are the mentors. What's your thought on that? I've, I've been not necessarily forced into mentorships before, but I've had some kind of intro mentorship meetups. And sometimes when there's no, when the the connection's not there, there, there isn't going to be a lot of value. I Mm. feel like sometimes the Lord, he, yeah, he can be at the center of it, Mm. but sometimes there's just not that common interest. Mm. Um, And so I think, yeah, I mean, the, the body of Christ is so large. And so part of it too, is being intentional about praying for Mm. it and having that desire to be mentored sometimes once you start praying about it and you're thinking about it just like as you pray out about opportunities you see, start seeing them everywhere mm. and sometimes it's the right time in somebody's life to be a mentor as well right where they've gone through that and the lord's doing a work in their life where it can be mutual right so it's not always i've, I've asked uh, a few guys that it wasn't the right time in their life mm. to uh to go out to lunch or do do uh, take on that role. Mm. Um, and now I'm realizing there's sometimes you got to pay for it, but then there's, cause I've part of the time I've, I've seen the mentors that are flaky too. Mm. And if you, you, if it goes back to the old adage, you get out of it, what you put into it. Right. And sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes that's just the reality. Right. So those relationships are, they're relationships. They take yeah. work. And, and do you feel like how you grew up just, you said you didn't really have a father figure that was pouring to you. It has a lot to do with kind of your heart now with wanting to pour into younger guys. Oh man. I, I think, and this, this dates me a little bit, but I, I look at if I, if I had somebody in high school kind of truly know who I am as a, as a young man and like see the potential, like I didn't know, I never really had a conversation with my dad until my, my father, until I was in college, mm. um, where I flew out to Tennessee to meet him. And I was like, Holy cow, he's so much like me or am I like him? And I saw that entrepreneurial spirit. It's right. like, damn, I missed the boat in college. Mm. Like took no business classes mm. and my, the way my mind works. Um, I, I could have been, I really could have been ahead of the game cause I was in Silicon Valley and, didn't know anything about business mm. um, out of college where I realized I could have done something amazing in regards to entrepreneurship right. if I had that seed planted earlier. Right. So right. I think trying to find those guys that were on that same path uh, might not have somebody speaking truth into their lives, but to have the God given talent, um, but nobody to say, Hey, guess what? Let's, let's focus on this mm. for a little bit. Let me challenge you to read this book. Um, as a, as becoming a s- kind of a serial entrepreneur, the books I fly through books, mm. and it's it's changed my life yeah. because it forced me to slow down. Where it used to be, I was watching TV and wanting to get caught up in in all the athletics, right? Um, that really kind of numb you. Yeah. Where books they've been forcing me to think, right? Um, so Aud- Audible's been my best friend these last five years. I was gonna say if you don't enjoy reading, yeah, you know, I'm someone that I can. I can read, but sometimes I don't comprehend mm-hmm. what I just read. And so I love Audible because I, I, I just obtain it a lot more. And mm-hmm. I think Audible is a great way to you know obtain information. But man, that's just so awesome to hear just your journey. And you know, I've gotten to know you a little bit better during mm-hmm. this um, podcast. And I hope that, that your story is um, motivating to someone mm-hmm. listening, right? Because you're not the only one that's come from a broken family, right? And, and to know that you can take your your past and, and worry what you've gone through and the different jobs to, to really catapult you and use it as a catalyst to, to have success, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and and be where you are. And I know that this is, this is a, the start of a new chapter in your life and in Mm -hmm. your career from what, what I'm gathering that Mm -hmm. is going to take you to places. I mean, a year or two, five years from now, you're going to be at a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Well, dude, this has been absolutely awesome just to hang out with you and, and get to know you more. I mean, 
what's your do, are you on social media do you want people to reach out if they have similar stories or questions or first off man thank you for taking action uh this is awesome such a cool platform i yeah i'd love to connect with anybody everybody i just love talking shop um i don't know if you do strength finders but my top five strengths and strength finders is all within the strategy strategy yeah <laughs> so i just love geeking out on that uh you can find me on instagram at the dan reese and that's reese r-e-e-c-e -E -E. the dan reese i'll the put dan the reese, yep. i'll put the link below if you're on youtube watching this just click below yep i'll have them on have there a little bit of content mostly revolving around rv and mobile home parks that's awesome. as well as uh, just friend me on friend me on facebook that's probably where i'm i've typically find some f some deals off market stuff there yeah. so I'll, I'll be hanging out there too yeah that's awesome man dude it's it's been a pleasure and i i hope we get to hang out more than just today man i'd love to just go hang out, take our RV somewhere. Yeah, buddy. Go camping. But dude, let me pray over you and, and just your trajectory, and then we'll get out of Love here. Love it. God, thanks for who you are and just for, for bringing divine appointments and people um, and just into my life. And um, and I, I'm so grateful for for Dan and just his uh, his story and being being willful and able to share what he's gone through to, to motivate people for your kingdom. Uh, God, we're so... Um, just amazed by what you're doing in his life. We thank you for his business and, and his investments in real estate and where you're taking him with that. And I pray that as he continues to gain success, momentum, and traction, that he would continue to bring you all the glory and, and know that you're the one doing this. And at the end of the day, that he can use his successes to, to share the gospel, to bring more people to you. Because people want success in their life. People want mentorship. People want leadership. And we need godly leadership. And I thank you that, that Daniel is one of those guys. So continue to build him up. I pray for the people that are listening and watching this podcast that you'd be moving in their lives, that, that your word would not return void, that something would, would spark something in them to say, man, I need, to, I need to learn about this guy. I need to learn about this God. God, we love you. Thank you so much for everything in Jesus' name. Amen.